Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Bob Fraley. Bob is a fisheries development supervisor at Game and Fish. Basically, he's in charge of boat ramp development. We're going to talk about lake and river access coming up this year. We're just coming off a tough winter. Spring at least should be here, Bob. Let's start with an area that's already got some open water and a little bit of fishing activity. The Missouri River and of course Lake Oahe, other than a few crowded boat ramps at times, uh, are you having any access problems? You know, we're really not right now. It's It's been kind of a funny spring, um, you know, despite the tough winter we had early on and then now we've had some, some pretty warm weather the last month or so. The river did open up and uh, there, are, there are anglers getting out, a few of them, but you know, we're not really hearing a lot of reports back on, on success and it's not the big spring rush like it usually is in March over here, but uh, the river flows and releases from the dam are, are pretty normal. Um, they're you know, 20,000 CFS right now and, and at those levels um, all of our ramps and amenities are in pretty good shape. Let's talk about the river from the dam down to the South Dakota state line, Bob. Uh, do you have any new ramps? Do you plan to put in any new ramps or cleaning stations for that matter? No, we don't really have any ramps and we, and we don't have any plans to put any new ones in. Strategically, you know, we've got pretty good access all the way from the dam to the South Dakota line. There's that gap on the Mandan side, of course, from like Little Heart up to Cross Ranch that always comes up and, and you know, we're always open to ideas if a site does open, but a anything is along the river is typically private and private land has usually got a pretty good value to it, so nobody wants to turn it into a boat ramp. But fish cleaning stations were, you know, again, those things are, are expensive to build and really expensive to maintain, so we really take a look at those before we stick one in. We are working with the Corps of Engineers and the Voices of Lake Oahe to upgrade the one down at the Beaver Bay Recreation Area on Lake Oahe this summer, and, or start the process to upgrade it anyway. You mentioned how hard it is to build a new ramp, Bob, and it's not just going out to the river, finding a spot and putting in some concrete. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. Uh, actually building the construction of the ramp, I always say, is the easy part. It's uh, finding the property. Um, getting ownership or an easement to that property, and then uh, all the other stuff that goes with it, uh, the ease, you know, the permitting that goes along with it, the site preparation, especially in the river where you're dealing with uh, moving water, um, a pretty sandy base substrate, so you're, you're having to you know, create your slope and create your base and, and armor plate it so it doesn't wash away when the flows go up and down on you. Game and Fish is managing a lot more lakes now than we did say 10 years ago and with those new lakes that we're managing it takes access. Are you having uh, quite a bit of success finding spots for lake access to some of these new great fisheries? Yeah, that, that's been kind of a tough spot for us. We're up to about 425 lakes now and it really depends on the species that are in the lake. If it's a pike perch fishery, those typically are winter fisheries and uh, we always have some sort of an access, whether it be from a section line or an easement with a landowner to get onto the, to those lakes before we do stock them. Um, if it's walleye, that's a different story because the walleye typically don't bite as well during the winter and it's more of a summer type fishery. And uh, there we have to have a little more property and therefore we you know, work with landowners and clubs to, to get an easement and, and develop a boating access site with parking. And uh, those can be challenging. You know, we're we're picking away at them. We you know usually get one or two new ones a year, but uh, but that that would that is an area we're focusing on for sure. Do you have plans to build some new ramps and where? Yeah, well, uh, we've got one on the book this year. Uh, it's up at uh, no northeast of Harvey, up there, Goose Lake. Mm -hmm. It's been a fishery for quite a while. Um, no access to it and no entity to work with. And last year, the Harvey group uh, formed a wildlife club and approached us about it, so we're gonna be putting in a new boat ramp up at Goose Lake this summer. All right, how about established lakes like Sakakawea, Devil's Lake, um, lakes around Devil's Lake? Are you plan to add any, or are we losing any access? Yeah, we're not, on, on Sakakawea and Devil's Lake, we're in really in pretty good shape again this summer based on the water levels, and I mean, we don't really know how much runoff we're gonna really get. Uh, the projection for Devil's Lake is about three, three and a half feet, 
and that will probably actually help us because we did lose one up there last year, Pelican Bay on the north side of, of Highway 19 there west of town. And uh, if we add three feet of water back into that basin again, you know, we'll, that, that ramp will come back on the line again. And we're not losing any of the other ones on Devil's Lake. Uh, Sakakawea, we're in really good shape. We're at about 1839 elevation now, and which is, you know, caught right around conservation pool. And at those elevations, you know, we've got good access, uh, things that have been established, uh, boat ramps. You know, we've got over 100 boat ramps on, Dev on Lake Sakakawea. Uh, at 35 different recreation areas and so we've got all the the different lake elevations covered whether it goes up or down pretty well. You mentioned cleaning stations a little earlier Bob and people have raved about these and the convenience of these things since we started putting them in a number of years ago uh, and this is a, kind of a different process too but you're going to upgrade uh, some of these now this year. Yep we uh, like I said earlier, we take a really hard look before we jump into one of those just because of the long-term maintenance costs that are associated with them. You know, just the nature of cleaning fish and all the mess that goes along with that. Uh, it takes a lot of work, almost a day-to-day -day type maintenance and cleaning and sanitizing of that station to keep it, you know, ready for the public. And uh, we're at about 60 stations statewide right now. The biggest thing we're seeing with those is that some of the older grinders and the tables and the the equipment that goes underneath that shelter and on top of that concrete slab, they're kind of wearing out on us, kind of like your grinder in your kitchen sink, I guess. And they so what we're to use. <laughs> absolutely. And so what we're doing on those when they do go bad, instead of trying to rebuild them and refurbish them, and we're going in with a, a new station, a new table, a uh, new grinder, larger grinder, uh, three phase. And so we kind of pull out the guts of the old one and, and put in a new one. So. Those are working out really well. We've done that for about two, three years now and, and have really good success with it. All in all, things look pretty rosy as far as access to North Dakota lakes. Yeah, things are pretty good. Um, uh, we've got a lot of amenities on the landscape right now. We've got you know probably close to 2,000 different you know docks and ramps and fish cleaning stations out there. And it takes a lot of work to keep them up and running and, and just maintaining and replacing here and there. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, things are really looking pretty good this year, Tom. All right. Bob, thanks. Thank you, Tom. There are a few things you need to do before you do any fishing in North Dakota. First off, you need a new license. Although the season is open year-round on all lakes in North Dakota, your license expires March 31st and you need a new one April 1st. You can buy them online at the Game & Fish website at gf.nd.gov. They're available at licensed vendors and most sporting goods stores across the state. You can even buy them over the phone by calling 800-406-6409. If you plan to fish from a boat, this is the year you need a new registration and stickers for your watercraft. You can get that accomplished on the Game & Fish website as well. For Bob Fralick and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game & Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.